Okay, Mr. Yes, Steven sir. Cervantes, here, how are you? Here I am, here you are. That's we, right. We are here. Yeah, so um, Stephen, we have been working with men mm-hmm. on this journey of pursuing greater sexual integrity and just kind of uh, wholeness and addiction recovery and a lot of that kind of stuff for right. for decades now, right? Whoa. So uh, <laughs> Um, You're getting old. Yeah. You know, this year's our 20th anniversary for, of Be Broken. So, wow. and, and considering that you and I go back farther than that, <laughs> yes, uh, I'd like to say we are getting old. Wow. Um, 20 years. But, you know, one of the things that, that I love coming back to every now and then on the program is just like fundamentals. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, one, I grew up being a basketball player and playing a lot of sports and stuff. And one of the things that was always drilled into us, no matter whether it was junior high, high school, college, whatever, it was like you never graduate from the fundamentals. There have to be basics. Like there have to be things that are at the base of what you're doing in order for you to keep growing. And so I love the fact that I think we're going to get back to some fundamentals here, right? I mean, yes. We're going to talk about That's good. How, what does it mean to work your program? What does that look like? Well, and I could have been a really good basketball player if I'd been good at dribbling, you know? (laughs) I get called off the bench in sixth grade. I go down the court and I lose the ball. Back to the bench I go. You think he calls me in again? (laughs) I lost the ball dribbling trying to get to the action, you know? So that's you're talking I mean. to the slow kid. So when you say, <laughs> let's do the basics, okay, that's good. Okay, all the slow kids out there, you should pay attention because this is the basics, Yeah. right? <clears throat> so, and I'm going to lead off with this thought. Whenever a guy fails at managing his sexuality, his sexual integrity, he fails. He slips. He messes up. My first thought is your program got weak Mm. what is your program because whatever you're doing is weak because our programs we design them to serve ourselves to hold us accountable and if we're not updating and continuing to improve and continuing to take away and add to a program you're either stunted or you're going backwards yeah we don't drift towards progress right (laughs) yeah Yeah. that's exactly right you don't just drift around and hope you get to a great place yeah it takes intentionality that's why we always talk about you got to be on growth mission right growth mission you always have to be on growth mission you have to be on a spiritual growth mission emotional growth mission integrity growth mission. we're always on a mission and until you die and that's Mm -hmm. the exciting part of life Mm-hmm. Or take up drinking as a best time or something. Pass that on the couch every night. If that's your best time, that's your mission. Okay, fine. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about using any of the vices that people use to sort of cope with life. We're talking about being in the fight of life, on the edge, out front, taking hits. But we're in the fight. So when mm-hmm. we die, we die well. And we say, man, I lived well. I fought well. I lived well. I honored my God. I had clarity of my vision. I'm in the fight. Mm. So today we're talking about what's your plan? You got a plan? You better have a plan. If you were talking to another guy, ask him what his plan is. He better have a plan or it's the blind leading the blind, right? We all need a vision, right? My people perish. They got no vision, right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? We're being transformed. What's the gospel? Transformation. Go from old to new. So there got to be steps. There have to, that's great English. There have to be (laughs) steps to move forward. So, so what's the basic of a, of a treatment plan? I would say, you've been alone, go to group. Mm-hmm. Find a group. Participate with other men in community because most of the guys get in trouble alone. Oh, yeah. You know? And I'll tell you what, for me personally, that was uh, both transformational and initially terrifying. Mm. And part of it is because, like, what are we talking about? Transformation means you're going from old to new, right? So right. whatever the old patterns were, that's what's most familiar. 
And so going to a new pattern is going to be unfamiliar because I remember the first time I was invited to go to a group and I about hyperventilated. I thought, (laughs) I don't want anybody to know my story. I don't want anybody to know these things. But it wasn't until I got into community that I realized, oh my goodness, this is the context or the environment of where healing actually takes place. I was fooling myself thinking that I could do the whole quote unquote recovery thing alone, like on my own. Oh, right. And so I'm a huge proponent of group and whatever form it needs to take there's support groups there's life groups there's you know maybe even mentorship type things where you got two or three guys that are part of it but you've got to be in community yes so uh, podcasts are on my list of what should be on a treatment plan and guess what you're listening to one yeah good job so (laughs) good job is right now i didn't put this in any particular order i just wrote a bunch of thoughts down because this might have been the first one prayer Mm-hmm. And I mean, pray for wisdom. God said, I'll give you wisdom, right? So pray for, don't just pray generally, pray for wisdom to see and to hear and to experience God in this transformation. And then find a guy. You need one or two guys. Jonathan just told me, I had breakfast with a guy this morning. Mm-hmm. Why? Guys make us better, right? We challenge them, they challenge us. You gotta have one or two guys that are walking alongside you on this mission. Yeah, I think that's really important. And I wanna say a little something because uh, I've changed my position a little bit. This might be news to you, Stephen. Hey, growth. I've I've changed my position a little bit on on how we frame up the idea of accountability. Okay. And the reason is because I think I had previously seen it in a way that's not even biblical, like like the term accountability that doesn't show up in the Bible. But that means to call someone out? What's, but what? what I'm saying is I think the way we have often used that is a sense of like, I need an accountability person that essentially I can sort of pass off responsibility of my decisions to them. Like, here, you hold me accountable, which mean, which sometimes means I want to tell you this stuff and then I want you to take responsibility to like call me. I want you to take responsibility to push me. I want you to take responsibility to like – be navigating my journey and i look at it this way i'm like i'm i'm at the end at the end of the day and at the end of my life i'm personally accountable before god amen like i I have to own it i have to own the whole journey so i like to think of it more in terms now of like just building friendships like i need friends friends that we're going to say like the bible says we do love one another we bear one another's burdens but not without not by taking the responsibility from that person of what they need to do in terms of their recovery and growth and all of that. So I've kind of shifted a little bit on that where, um, because I've had guys come to me in desperation and say, I need an accountability guy. And I'm I'm like, why? You know, I need somebody to, you know, basically tell me what to do. And I'm like, well, we can help you with that. But at the end of the day, what are you owning? Like, you've got to own what you're doing in this. But the, the other part of what you're saying is we're both on a walk. Absolutely. How am I am I supposed to say I'm better than you? So so I'll yeah, lead no. you. Are you kidding? I'm struggling to lead me. Yeah, but so that's what I'm saying. Friends side by side. Friends are walking together and yes. and friends might say as they see you almost about to step in a hole, oh oh hey, watch out there, you know. So but, what do you did you change the label too from accountability guy to friend guy? Hey. Well just friends. I mean let's just make it simple. It's it's about building friendships. So, okay, so. you need a friend. Well, and, and look, you probably do. You probably do a lot of secret stuff. Get a couple of friends, will you? Well, think about it. How many men do we meet today that if we ask them, hey, do you have a best friend? They're like, not yeah. since high school, right? <laughs> right. But And I get together with some of the high school guys. All the football players are still jocks. It's yeah. so funny, you know? <laughs> all the band guys are still, you know, musically talented, and all the chess players are still really smart. I, I don't know. <laughs> don't get me started. So you need to read a book. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one that really slips into e- churches very easily, right? It's called Every Man's Battle. And it's just a basic book. Every man, right? Any man could take that book to church and start a group for men on sexual integrity, right? If you walked in with one, one of the books on sexual addiction, it's like everybody leaves the room. But you come in with an Every Man's Battle, and just make it a starter book. And you and a brother get together. Let's read this book. And then let's read the next one, the next It's just a starter book. And so if you haven't got one, get a starter book on integrity. Share it with your friend. Read it together with your buddies. And, and we've, got a, 
we've got books obviously be broken and we can yes. uh, we've got lots of stuff there too as well um would you what would you say they read man one of my go-tos and it's been around a long time but i love it is uh as breaking free by breaking Ru- free russell willingham okay good really so good, yeah yeah and so you could do that one breaking free uh, but find a book. And I just want we throw in a couple of starters because when you go on the mission, you're going to read and pick it up, put it down, read another one, pick it up. You know, if and you I read would, one page a day, we don't care, but have material. And that's what I want to say, too, because uh, this is a lot of times where I have guys that they just kind of tune out. So as we're kind of talking about treatment plan and they go, I can't tell you how many guys I've heard over the years tell me I'm not a reader. Right, exactly. And yeah. here's, I mean, I don't try to be, uh, you know, harsh when I respond this way, but I just say you got to become one. <laughs> That's part of growth. That's right. part of. I'm not saying that you have to start reading and you know 500 pages a day, but guess what? Reading I think is essential for our growth. We need, and even if it's like okay, now with technology, it's so great because if let's say you struggle with visually reading words on a page. There's audio books. Right. There's ways that you can get this in That's a way, right. but you've got to be getting good information. New ideas. Yeah. New ideas. They don't fall out of the sky. you got to go hunt for them. Then, you know, being part of a church, going to Sunday school, using all your spiritual resources to help you and to, to weave together emotional, spiritual, right? Because they have to work together. When you're on growth mission, you have to have new information. And what's the foundation? Our Bibles right and faith in god Mm -hmm. and and you have to recognize either you're on growth mission or you're not if you go i don't know i didn't know there's a growth mission yeah yeah you're on it whether you're not you were a baby and then you became 10 and then you became 20 you're on you're growing but have you engaged the fact that that's god's plan is the transformation through the years where we get deeper and deeper and richer we know him better and better and we give up and we add in and we release and we bound our hearts and minds to the things of God. That's the growth mission we're on. Yeah, and I think, I think it's important to, uh, to understand when we talk about a growth mission, it's like, yeah, you mentioned the biology, right? Well, you don't really have, I mean, you can sort of have that on autopilot to a degree because there's just biological realities that are going to happen like you're going to turn years are happening time is is happening Mm -hmm. where where we're talking about here i think is there's you have to bring your your whole self into this growth mission meaning like if you think that you're going to become you know a wise mature man of god without actually pursuing Mm -hmm. some of these things we're talking about it doesn't happen that way. Like I said before, we don't drift towards progress. Like you, you have to have intention there. Right. And we're talking, I think, more about this in terms of emotional growth, spiritual growth, relational growth. Yes. And and those things, uh, they don't work quite like biology, in the sense of like just time passing. My body's doing all these things and changing. Okay. So what do you tell yourself during the course of a day? Right. What What are the lines you were tempted all the time sexually? You just, right, and wherever you go, there's other people, and they live by different standards, and temptation is everywhere. So, one, you have to have these steps we're talking about, material to read, friends to walk with, group, but what's the language? What's the internal language when temptation occurs? And so one brother shared this, not even a hint. Not even a hint. He just repeats it over and over, not even a hint, not even a hint. That's a biblical principle, not even a hint, not even a hint. Turn and walk away, not even a hint. And and so I'm going to read mine, then you do some of yours. Well, well, personally, I say, really? Really? Really, Stephen? Really? You're going to stay in this moment? How long are you going to stay? Really? Really? You think it's good for you? Really? I just repeat the word really over and over. Really? 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 You know what you're doing? Really? You know where this goes? Really? Really? You want to be stupid? More? Really? And then I go, oh, 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 what am I doing here? Yeah. One of mine that I like is uh, is I just try to remind myself that's not what I truly want. Oh, that's and sometimes not what I'll I truly remember want. the whole Romans seven passage where Paul's talking about this internal struggle, like you know what oh. I what I don't want is what I keep pursuing, and then what that tells me, you know what that means in my heart of hearts, what I actually want is the righteousness of God, and mm. so sometimes I just try to remind myself. Say the line again. 
That's not what I truly want. That's either. not what I truly want. That's a good one. I'm adding it to the list. That's and, not what I truly and I, want. And I'm not denying that I have a desire right now toward whatever yeah. the temptation is. I'm saying there's a part of me that wants what the this flesh. temptation is saying. Yeah. But that's not what I truly want. Like in my heart of mm. hearts, I don't really want that. And then I'll kind of do some of the stuff you're talking about. Like, okay, yeah, where does this go? Where does this lead? It doesn't go anywhere good. It's not going to end in a positive place, you know? Well, I like what you're saying. That's not what I truly want, and that's not what I truly need right now, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the other part. I need something. I need a distraction. I'm lonely. I'm tired. But is that what you truly need? No, that's not what I need. Right, you right. Know? So you have to have language, and you and your buddy have to share the language. We're sharing our language with you. And so you have to have language to manage sexuality and cravings and urges that just want to take off. So they just want to be a slippery slope, and boom, you're gone. You're you're gone down the hill in the pit. It's like no, stay up on the mountaintop and use your language, and and pray and invite God and hold the moment. So so what do we need every day? We need to be filled. And this last one was a great segue into it. Is that what I want? Is that what I need? Is this going to help me, or is this like bubble gum? Am I going to eat another piece of candy? Get some sweet and. You know, practice, then I have to, you know. My teeth my fall teeth, out, right. Yeah. Cavities, I get extra fat. Do I, have, do I want someone with bad side effects? What do I really need? And what I need is the presence of God, mm -hmm. right? I need to be in his presence. I need to be in Abba's presence. I need to be Abba's boy. And so every day I have to read my Bible and meditate and talk to him like he's right there with me, like he and I are on a walk together. Can I say something about yeah. this idea of being filled? Yeah. I, I think it's important. Especially, you know, I think that's a lot of times uh, in, in Christian circles, you know, we can talk about certain things and it can maybe come across a little confusing to those who don't understand what we're maybe trying to say. Okay. So this idea of like, well, you know, ultimately I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I need to be filled with God. And it can almost seem like uh, to somebody who's never maybe heard that or understood that. So what are you saying? Is there like... So I get 20% of God, but I need really 100%. And I, I just want under, people to understand that when, when you have placed your faith in Christ, we're told that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. Yes. That is God himself. Mm -hmm. And so you're not getting partial Holy Spirit. Like you have, he's a, he's a whole person. <laughs> like you, the Holy Spirit comes in you. I think this idea of filling Think of it this way, Stephen. I, this is one way that I sometimes think of it. If I'm in relationship with somebody, let's say my kids or my spouse or just mm -hmm. a good friend, um, I'm not getting a partial person when I'm engaging that that person. Okay. Right. Like yeah. if I'm sitting here with you, you're 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 all of Stephen here. Right. But. The, the degree to which I'm connected to you, the degree, degree to which I'm engaged with you, the degree to which I know you, there's a different kind of quote-unquote filling that I'm having of your life in mine. And okay. so I kind of think of it that way. Like when I'm saying, God, I want, you, I want to be filled with the Spirit today. I'm not saying somehow I don't have the complete Holy Spirit. Okay. But am I engaging in such a way where the fullness of the expression of all of what that means of his power and his wisdom and his knowledge and all of that is now flowing through me? Does that make sense? Yes. So it's kind of like. But it's sort of interesting because I've, I've tried to draw a picture of the Holy Spirit and my spirit, right? We are a spirit. Mm hmm. And we invite the Holy Spirit to live in the same place, almost to lives to lay on top of one another or something, or to weave together somehow, right? Because you're right, the Holy Spirit is there. But but I still have my spirit, and I can say, well, okay, Holy Spirit, I'll be back in a minute. Right. I think I'm going to go, right? But the fullness is there, right? And it's a matter of do I embrace it and get lost in it, mm -hmm. right? Or defy and, re and rebel. Yeah. So, and it's tricky because I think, uh, you know, the whole idea of Jesus being a human being is one thing. The Holy Spirit is a little like. Well, That's mysterious at times. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, yeah. but if you have a, an encounter with God and His Spirit, then you know what we're talking about. Just something happened. I just know in my spirit, right, that I couldn't figure it out in my spirit, and I need God's Spirit to explain that. I mean, there's just something that happens in the course of your life. And that's what makes our Christianity so great. Is it is the answer to the emptiness in our soul, and, and the reason I think direction. the reason I think we're 
there's a phone going off here. But <coughs> okay, back from our break, our little interruption from the phone there. But um, I think the reason that this is important, talking about the spirit like this, is this this is not disconnected from what we're talking about working your program and all that. Because yeah. the reality is, is we're we're trying to pursue a life of 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 holiness and purity, right? Well, we can't do that on our. When you talk about you know your spirit is intertwined with the Holy Spirit, we do still have our spirit in the sense in which like I still have a will I still have yes. an ability to choose and so guess what I need the Holy Spirit because Amen. on my own I'm not going to make the right choice yeah you're a mess I'll, yeah. I'll just agree with you there <laughs> yeah. so the battle cries out all the time uh, will you give up your innocence or will you protect your innocence will you be sexually stupid or will you practice sexual sanity and integrity What's your call today? You have a free will. Pick one. Better or worse? What are you going to do? And so I think to myself, well, how far away is the battle? Well, just turn on your computer mm. and the ads start popping up, right? Or turn on your television and, and you got all kinds of edgy, risky, tempting stuff right there. Um, People use their phone all the time, right, to look up stuff and other stuff pops up. And so it's not like we're not in a battle. We're in a battle every day. And so when we talk about what's your plan, what's your language, what's your vision, right? What are you going to tell yourself? Where, are you trying to move closer to Christ-likeness or pleasure self, Right. So, uh, and, you know, we just have to be aware of danger, right? Every day we walk out that door, there's danger out there because evil wants you. Yeah, and this is why I think, you know, we talk about boundaries a lot in, mm -hmm. in do, not just recovery ministry, but just what does it mean to go on this transformation journey? We need healthy boundaries. Yeah. Um, it, you know, people do this all the time when they think about, like, I need to get better with my diet or whatever. Yes. Right? What are you doing? You're putting boundaries around what yes. you're going to eat and what you're not going to eat. And uh, I think the same thing needs to be needs to happen here. Uh, what I would say on this is there's a, there's a journey that I think we need to even go on in that regard because it can be very easy to slip very quickly into this very legalistic, like, rules-based system, which essentially says... You know, I've, I've figured it out, Stephen. I've figured out the formula. Uh, and that is, you know, you just need to shut down all your screens. And you know what? You do too. And you start to start, like impose <laughs> on others. all the answers. This they don't work. Right? Now the thing is, but what I think is, it's, and I think some of it is just born out of like when we try something and it works for us, we get all excited about oh, it, right? that's true, yeah. No, but, that's but we got to be careful of saying, hey, you know what? This thing was really beneficial for me. I want to share that with you, but not then say, this is the golden rule for everybody. Like this is what's going to oh, work for right. everybody. And it's you better true. do it too, you know? It's too funny. I thought you were talking about the kind of guys that come to group. Man, they're so pumped. I found this group. You guys are working on integrity. I got this real problem. They show up day one, they're excited. Day two, they're half excited. Day three, they're gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, week one, they show up. Week two, they, and week three, we never see them again. I mean, right. just, people start with such hope and promise, but they realize, hey, this is a journey. It's mm -hmm. gonna take a while. You, got, you made a mess over time. It's gonna take time to clean up. So you have to be careful in this battle during these times. When you're alone, when you're bored, when you're restless, and when your mind just to want, wants to wander and play. I got to confess, yesterday at 9 o'clock, I sat on a chair. I was sort of bored. It was too early to go to bed. I picked up my phone. I went to Facebook, and they had this feed, and so I started flipping. Okay, cutting down trees. Could hit the house, might not hit the house. So I, I'm watching, and I, I, I kid you not, there had to be five trees on here that were cut down different ways. And then they're gonna knock down a silo. And a guy has his tractor and he's gonna knock down a silo. So he takes a little piece here and I'm waiting. Is it gonna fall, is it not gonna fall? And then I get tired of watching and waiting the weather silo is gonna fall or not. So I go over and the lady's feeding alligators. I mean, monster alligators. You got chickens and they're, and she's like two feet away from these alligators. I'm going, you could be the chicken, get away. <laughs> and so I watch her feed the chicken. It, I wake up, it's, I mean, I look up, it's 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I have looked at nothing mindlessly. Wait, 
My wife was right across, and I said, do you know I wasted an hour sitting in this chair looking at this thing? I don't do this. I have stuff to do with my life. I don't do that. But that's the invitation of the world. Mm -hmm. Waste your life, entertain yourself, don't deal with reality of where you are. Now it's okay to rest. I'm not, I'm not picking on people. Yeah. Because we have to have rest in our soul. I'm just saying, man, we can waste a lot of life well, real what, easy. And I like what you're sharing there because it's really practical because I think every I would I would imagine most everybody that's listening to this has experienced a similar thing to what you're talking about there. And so many times that becomes these little like breadcrumbs or these little dominoes that start falling, right? Yeah. To where it's like, okay, I get sort of uh, mind numb on chainsaws and, <laughs> and you know alligators, and but the thing is, if if you're not careful, then the next little trip can start taking you down other avenues. Right. And there's a, I think there's a uh, a, if I could put it this way, maybe I'm coining a new phrase here. There's a will weariness. Mm that can happen. In other words, our will gets weary right. as we just kind of go down these paths of, of mindless activity. And I think you're right, alone, bored, restless, these, these are the kind of things that can lead us to maybe being more vulnerable to temptation. And I think, look, let's be honest, our sexuality is a pleasant distraction. We're sexual beings, mm -hmm. it creates arousal, orgasms feel good, Touch is nice, youth and beauty and fitness and I mean that's all that's all pleasurable stuff. So but you have to be very careful when you're really in that edgy place where maybe you're too angry right now and and you're feeling horny and raunchy and I mean there's an edgy, edgy place you have to be very careful. Because when you go to that place, that's beyond the board and restless. Mm -hmm. Right? Then your sexuality says, I, I got to fix, I got to fix. Yeah, you're almost in that state of mind. You're almost getting to the I don't care mentality. Oh, that's like, good. I don't really care what what I do next. And wi will weariness will weariness, is right yeah, there. Exactly. It's right there. It's like, I don't want to fight anymore. So if you go to a gateway, which we do these intensives that are really great, we've noticed this pattern of some men – uh, never fail. They leave. They come clean. They take it so serious. They work so hard. They they just they fail. Everybody's human, but they do a great job and they never slip back. But some of the guys come out with this great spurt of a weekend, and then you know a month later, six weeks, they start getting tired. Their mm -hmm. wife didn't change. Their life didn't change. Their body didn't change, and they have a spirit to fight, but they get weary. And so they slow down, and then some of them plateau. And, and, and if you rest, okay, that's fine. But you have to get back in the fight. You always have to. And, and I think you would, if you're honest, if I'm honest, I feel the same. Some days I'm on a surge. Mm -hmm. And some days my feet hurt. I don't want to climb any more right. mountains today. I want to sit on the plateau, right? And, and I guess... It might even be fun to get a piece of cardboard and slide down this mountain. But it's not going to make you better, right? Right. You have to get up off the plateau, get back in the fight. So so don't even feel bad if this happens to you. Yeah. Right? What, Everybody gets knocked down and tired. What I would say is, you know, we started this by saying every day you got to work your program, right? Mm -hmm. um, what you just described in terms of the peaks and valleys – that's part of the program. Oh, that's good. Meaning like I think sometimes I look at it as like when you have some of the the plateauing, I think sometimes those become the greatest opportunities for you to revisit and reevaluate your program. Yeah. Because yes. I don't think, uh, you know, we mentioned that sometimes the battle gets especially hard during when you're bored. Yes. Right? Well, guys, don't think that because your initial sort of – uh, layout of your particular program is the way it will always be. In other mm. words, we looked at things like group, prayer, uh, having, building friendships, you know, reading some books. Think about how much uh, creativity there can be in every single one of those things. Group, guess what? My, my life and community has morphed probably 10 times mm. over the last 20-plus years in my recovery. Um, 
Uh, prayer, my goodness, that's changed a lot over mm-hmm. the years. Friendships, even that. So there's a sense in which don't, even if you feel like you're stuck, interpret that stuckness as like, what do I need to look at in my program? Oh, that's good. That could use some shifting. And, right. and, and see, that's that all part of the growth. Yeah. Use that quiet that pl- to reevaluate. Even use that wisely, you're saying. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for being with us. I really want to encourage you guys, if you never have come to a Gateway to Freedom workshop, it's a great catalyst for going on this journey that we're talking about yes. and helping you to establish a program that you can really be working every single day. Yep. Um, so please reach out to us if you need further help, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio program. God bless. God bless.